Okay, so here is a problem, and we're going to use work energy to solve this, but it may not seem like that would be the best bet. So here is a swing. So it has a, a string of length L, and it starts at some angle theta, and it goes down like this, and then it swings back up and back and forth. You know, a swing. So the question is, what's the tension in the string at the bottom? So you could start with something like this. Here I have that just hanging there. And then if I drew the forces, I'd have the gravitational force and the tension pulling straight up. Oh, and I'm going to link some videos down below, uh, some background material. So if you're just jumping into this, uh, you know, these are some things that you can go back and look at to help you prepare for this problem. So if that, if that ball is just hanging there, it's not swinging, then I know that the net force in the y direction is equal to zero because the change in momentum, the acceleration is zero. So that means that I have T minus mg equals zero and the tension is equal to mg. That's easy. This is different. What's different about this when it gets to the bottom and it's swinging? Well, the difference is that this one's gonna be moving, let's call this position one and this position two. This is gonna have some velocity V2. Big deal, right? It is a big deal because now I have the ball is or the object is moving in a circle and it's at a con even if it's at a constant speed or not, it's not, um, then it would be accelerating. So it would have an acceleration in the upward direction. So if I draw this case, then here are my forces. I still have the same gravitational force, but now I have a greater tension because F net is going to be equal to um, T minus mg, this is F net y, minus mg equals m v2 squared over r. v2 squared over r is the centripetal acceleration. When something's moving in a circle, it accelerates towards the center of the circle, and the magnitude is that right there. And I will definitely link a video about centripetal acceleration. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Right now I can just say T equals add mg to both sides, mg plus m v squared v2 squared over r, and the radius of the circle is actually L. So I'm done, right? No. Why am I not done? Because I don't know that velocity. Right, if I start at some angle, let's say uh, let's say L is you know ten meters and theta is thirty degrees and the mass is uh, seventy kilograms, and what's what's the tension? I don't know because I don't know the velocity. So now we need to find the velocity at the bottom, and so we haven't done any work energy yet. So now we need to do work energy. So let's look at this problem from a work energy standpoint to find the velocity at the bottom. I, I will have to say that this problem, it's a pendulum problem. And it's not so easy. Don't think, uh, oh, well, it's a pendulum. I can look up the period of motion. It's all it's simple harmonic motion. One, it's not actually simple harmonic motion. There's no, you can approximate it as that. Uh, two, it's not a simple problem. It's not a simple problem because if I look at right here, I have the forces mg and the tension. Okay, but but they don't add up to zero. They're not, they don't add up to the zero vector. If they did, the ball would stay there, but it doesn't, so it accelerates. What about right here? Now it's moving, so it has an acceleration that way, it has a tension that way, gravity is that way. It's a tough problem, okay? It is a tough problem. It's tough to find the forces wherever you want using forces, but we can use work energy. And so, of course, you might want to go back and look at this work energy video. I'll post it down below, down there, down there. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is to pick our system. In this case, I'm going to choose the system as the mass plus the earth. Uh, not the string, but it doesn't matter, and, and you will see. And then I can say work is the change in kinetic energy of the ball, or person or whatever it is, plus the change in gravitational potential. So kinetic energy is one half mv squared and gravitational potential energy is m 
G, Y. And now you see a problem. Where is Y? What's Y? I don't know what Y is. So you could pick Y to be whatever you want, um, as long as you are consistent with your origin. Um, I'm going to pick Y to be down here. This lowest point is Y equals 0. And then I have point 1, I have point 2. If you remember with the work energy system, always deals with two points. Now, is there any work on the system? Well, I have the gravitational force, but that's the potential, so I don't have work done by that. And then I have the tension. But the tension doesn't do any work because at each instant, it's moving this way. Delta R is that way, and the tension is always perpendicular to the direction of motion. So the tension doesn't do any work because the work done by the tension would be T dot dr, but these are perpendicular, so that's going to be zero. It doesn't do any work. Okay, so that means let's start putting things together. I have the work is zero K2 minus K1 plus U2 minus U1. Now, two of these terms are zero. The kinetic energy at point one is zero because it's not moving. And the potential energy at point two is zero because it's at y equals zero. So that means I have one half m v2 squared, and then I have minus m g y1. So what's y1? What's the, the height right there? y1. Well, I know this is of length l. That's the angle theta. So this would be L cosine theta. I know that this whole length is L. So the leftover stuff, Y1, is going to be L times 1 minus cosine theta, or L minus L cosine theta. So it's going to be this whole distance minus that distance, and it gives us a leftover. That's a trick. I get it. I'm okay with that. Uh, so if I put that in and solve for V2, I get 1 half M V2 squared equals, I added this to the other side, MGL times 1 minus cosine theta. The mass cancels, and I can solve for the velocity by multiplying by 2 and taking the square root, and I get V2 equals the square root of 2GL, 1 minus cosine theta. Now I can put that back in to my tension equation from before, and I get T equals mg plus m over L, and then I have to take V2 squared, which is just this stuff squared. So it's going to be 2GL, 1 minus cosine theta. And let's just check some things here. Uh, what if I start at theta equals 0? Well, then this would be 1, and I'd get this whole thing would go to 0, and I'd get mg. That makes sense, right? Because if it starts down here at, at theta equals 0, it's not going to be moving. We already did that problem. Um, do, what about the units? This has units of, of newtons. Mass times g is newtons. This is going to be mass times g is newtons, and then I have 2, no units. Then I have L divided by L, and those cancel. Oops, they do cancel. <laughs> and then I get 1. Kind of surprised that it doesn't matter about the length. Huh, okay, well, and then this is, has no units. So I, I assume that the longer the length is, the faster it's going to be going at the bottom because it's going to have a greater change. However, it's going to be moving in a greater circle too. So I'm, I'm kind of surprised that length doesn't matter, but it does make sense. So there's your expression right there. That's your tension at the bottom of the swing. Um, could you find the tension anywhere, at any point. I don't think that's quite as trivial because in this case, we assumed that the uh, starting velocity was zero. But if I go right here, oh, I could do, if I go from here to there, I could do that. Yeah, but then my final potential wouldn't be zero. I could do it. I think I could set that up. You can do that as a homework problem, but that's something that you could do. Okay, so um, if you like this series, you know, subscribe. Uh, check out some of the links I have down below that will help you with this problem, and I will talk to you guys later.